Let's make our trees grow strong and high. Let's see how to do that. We find ourselves in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we will add our tree. So we'll add the custom tree. We've added the wood already. And now we'll add the sapling and the leaves and also a way to spawn the tree from the sapling. This crosses over a tiny bit with world generation but only the littlest bit. We're not yet gonna spawn the tree in the world. That's something we'll look at in the next tutorial. Right now, we'll just create the tree and have it be able to spawn in with a sap. All right, we'll need two new blocks for this. So let's copy over the planks twice. And this is going to be the redwood leaves. And then here are the same redwood leaves. There you go. And this is going to be a leaves block. Leaves block, there you go. We'll make abstract properties create and then We'll take in material dot leaves. We'll set, let's say we'll set the hardness and resistance to 0.2F. That's the usual for leaves. We'll also have to call tick randomly. That's very important. The sound is going to be sound type dot plant and then a not solid once more because of course in leaves we have the see-through effect at least when we're in fancy mode in terms of graphic. So the not solid is very important. And then a redwood sapling. And then here, of course, the same sapling. This is, as you might have guessed, a sapling block. Now, this actually takes in a tree and we have to make a new tree. Let's just make a new oak tree. We'll be creating our own tree in just a moment. So we'll actually make a new tree class. We'll just put this in as a placeholder for the time being. And then this is, of course, oak, oak underscore sapling. Right, and that's the registration done. Now onto our tree class. We'll create this class in block custom and then we'll make a new package called trees and in there we'll create a new java class called the redwood tree this extends tree this is the net minecraft block trees tree very important that you select this class because there's a few other classes that are called tree we don't want those and let's hover over this and say implement methods and we see we need this get tree feature as a method we need to implement this and for the time being this is null and it will stay null for the moment because we need to actually create another class and that is going to be the mod configured features. So the way that trees work is they have a configured feature. In the most simple terms, a configured feature is basically a feature that has a certain configuration attached to it that spawns in the world. So some type of world generation. So if you see configured feature or even just feature, you can always think, okay, that's probably something to do with world generation. You know, as a general overview in Minecraft, world generation is kind of a mess. So there's a lot of moving parts in there. Yeah, but because we need a configured feature here, we're gonna go into our tutorial mod package, right click new package. This is going to be the world package. And inside of that, we're gonna make a new package called gen. So together, this would be world gen. And then in the gen package, new class, and this is the mod configured features. The vanilla analog to the mod configured features class is the just the features here. So net Minecraft world gen feature, we can import this and then middle mouse button click. And then as you can see, it has a bunch of configured features in here. For example, we have ore, uh, or diorite, or gold nether. We have some diamond ore, so how the diamond ore actually spawns. And what we also have, as you can see, is the configured features with a base tree feature config, for example, oak. So what we can do is we can simply take this, just select this line, control C, go back here, let's control V this. And then the first thing is that we don't have this register method. That's not an issue. We can also get this. So middle mouse button, click on here, and then we can also yank the register method as well, because this is basically always the same. There's no need not to do this. And then let's see what the tree feature entails. And as you can see, there's a lot of things in here. Like I said, the world generation is very complex and, and there's quite a few things that you need to just try out as well. Let's rename this to redwood. And then instead of the oak key, we'll get the redwood key in here. And then let's see what this tree feature is. This calls feature.tree.with configuration. So we're basically creating a tree feature with a certain configuration. As you can see, this tree configuration takes to this base tree feature config and that makes a builder out of it. And this builder has a few things that it needs. It has a trunk provider, a lease provider, a foliage placer, a trunk placer, and then a minimum size. Those are all different types of classes here, all in the world gen packages. The trunk provider simply needs to be a block state provider. And the idea here is that this is the trunk of the tree. So this is the logs that you need to supply here. So this would be mod blocks dot redwood log dot get get default state because here we want a block state and not the block so we need to also do get a default state here we'll have the leaves 
this is also fairly trivial, modblocks.redwood.redwoodleaves.get.get default state. And then the three afterwards are a little more complicated. The blob foliage placer, as you can see, is a foliage placer. This is how the leaves are placed. You can also go into this and go up here to the foliage placer, press Control H. And then as you can see, there are a bunch of different ways that you can place foliage on trees. So pine trees, for example, have a different way of placing the leaves than, for example, the dark oak or the oak or any other things. We're going to stick to the blob foliage placer in this case. My advice is always to just play around with this a little bit to get the desired effect, because at the end of the day, there are so many different moving parts that just change a few numbers, change a few classes, take a look at those, and then you will probably get some of your desired effects. The straight trunk placer should also be kind of obvious. It's just going to be a tree that's straight up with a base height of four, and then we get a random height of two added to it. So there's a little bit of randomness, of course. Now a ridwood tree is, of course, way bigger. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this six, and then we're going to make this four, and this let's make this three. Sadly, the two later feature is really not that well explained, so there is not really any documentation on what this really does. Best to just play around with this a little bit. We'll keep it for our redwood in the same values as the oak tree for the time being. But like I said, especially when it comes to world generation, the easiest way to get your desired effect is to just play around with the numbers a little bit, and then hopefully you'll get to something that you want. Now that the mod configured feature is done, we can go back to our redwood tree and actually return this. So mod configured features. Redwood. Now the redwood tree returns our mod configure feature and now we can go to our mod blocks and actually create a new redwood tree instead of the oak tree. And then last but not least, let's open our tutorial mod class and once again go down to our do client stuff because we will need to set the render layer once more. So let's copy the render layer from the oats and let's get our redwood leaves and also our redwood sapling here and those are both going to be set to cut out as well. And then in terms of code, that is all that we need. Now onto the JSON files. I'll once again copy over the JSON files. This time they are really not that complicated. So both the sapling as well as the leaves have the absolutely normal block states JSON, as you can see the JSON for any default block as well. They simply point to a model in the models block directory. So let's add those as well. The leaves are fairly easy to see as well. The only difference here is that it doesn't have the cube all in the parent, but it has the leaves in the parent. Textures is still all and it simply points to a block texture. So nothing too spectacular here. And the redwood sapling, the only difference here is that this is a cross parent because the way that the saplings are displayed is in a cross pattern. And this is simply what happens here. Let's also add the item models. The redwood leaf simply once again points to the block model. And the redwood sapling is also just a normal item texture here as well. So nothing really that crazy. I'll add the block textures. And then last but not least, we'll add a few tags here as well. And we're, we'll simply copy over the fences here. The first thing is going to be the leaves.json. This is going to be the redwood underscore leaves. The reason we need to add those is if we don't add this to the, we need to add those as well as the logs. And those are going to be the redwood underscore log. You can double check. There you go. And this is very important because the log has to be there. Otherwise, the leaves that spawn will immediately start to despawn because the leaves actually take a look for a log in the area. And this is determined by the logs.json. We can also add planks.json, so redwood planks here. And then in the Minecraft tags folder, we'll add a new directory called items. And then we'll simply copy over the logs, the leaves and the planks here as well. We hold control, then we will duplicate those. There you go. And the reason we do this is so that the planks are immediately recognized as plank items as well. So then we can use the planks now to actually craft crafting tables, sticks, and just certain things that planks can be crafted into. Not everything, but a few things are immediately available to us then. And last but not least, also add the translation to the en underscore us json file, just so that we have that as well. And after all of that is done, Let's see if it works. All right, we found ourselves in Minecraft once more and let's see if it worked. We have the redwood leaves and the redwood sapling in the game. So that's pretty nice. Let's actually place down those leaves. Now I really 
I actually really like those leaves. I think that they're probably one of my be better textures, if I do say so myself. The interesting thing about the leaves is that they are actually green, so they're not the gray variant and they won't change color in different biomes. That is way more complicated to actually implement that and we're not going to do that in this tutorial. The sapling, however, let's place it down and let's get some bone meal and let's see if we can grow ourselves a redwood tree. And there we have it. Look at this beauty. Isn't it nice? That's that's just really, really great. And that's how easy it can be. We can, of course, also check if I just place down a few saplings here and once again increase the tick speed. So game rule, random tick speed. And let's do this 20,000. Then as you can see, at some point, they will grow on their own as well, which is pretty nice. And that's all you really need to add your own custom tree. Like I've already mentioned, the configured feature here determines how the tree looks and this is where you would change a few values and change out different things. I highly encourage you to just play around with it, look how the configured features of other trees look in vanilla and also you can always go to GitHub and just search for some configured features base tree feature config and see how some of the mod makers have created their trees and maybe you can find some inspiration there as well. With that, it is already the end of this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. I would, of course, appreciate a like if you did. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. So, yeah.